As for Brito, he remains held on Rikers Island on $15,000 cash bail. He also has two open cases. The large majority of them are released into the U.S. and have not been deported or removed. Huge number, 24,000, those are the ones that turned themselves in or were captured, and you wonder how many were not. Uh, and that's only one part of the, the, of the border situation. You Unruly mob of migrants scuffling with New York City cops at a hotel shelter north of Manhattan. Federal immigration authorities say two of the asylum seekers arrested for attacking New York City police officers recently. Brawl between NYPD and migrants. Manhattan's district attorney Alvin Bragg has announced the indictment of seven people who were involved in a brawl in Times Square in which migrants beat two police officers, an incident that sparked widespread controversy in a backlash over New York City's policy toward migrants. Newly released body camera and surveillance camera footage also shows the lead-up to the brawl and appears to contradict part of official accounts of what happened. NYPD Chief of Detectives Joseph Kenny, who appeared at a news conference alongside Bragg and New York Mayor Eric Adams on Thursday, said the January 27 incident began after officers approached a group of individuals who were gathered outside a shelter blocking a sidewalk. All but one of the individuals complied. The one who didn't, identified as Yohenry Brito, turned around and got confrontational with the police officers and refused the lawful order, Kenny said. They attempted to place him under arrest, and the melee begins with the officers trying to take Mr. Brito into custody. And the next thing you know, they're being attacked by 13 other people. So that's how it started. Body cam footage released by officials Thursday and shared by the Associated Press appears to show Brito, who is wearing a distinctive yellow jacket, walking away before the altercation. In the footage, Brito, who is pushing a stroller that appears to contain his belongings, seems to insult the two officers, comparing them to Betty La Fea or Ugly Betty in reference to the Colombian telenovela that was made into a U.S. television show. An officer then grabs him and pushes him into a doorway. The footage shows Brito is still for a number of seconds as he is held against the doorway. Then he protests and tries to get away before being tackled to the ground. Adams described the attack on the police officers as despicable, saying at the Thursday news conference it was not only an attack on the individuals who wore the police uniform but it was an attack on our symbol of justice. Five people arrested last week are among the seven indicted over the attack on the two officers, according to a press release from Bragg. Brito and three of the others who were arrested, Darwin Andres Gomez Izquiel, Jorman Riveron, and Kelvin Servida Arrocha, face two accounts of second-degree attack and a second-degree count of obstructing governmental administration. Federal immigration authorities say two of the asylum seekers arrested for attacking New York City police officers recently. Five other suspects were charged but released, and now some state Republican lawmakers are calling on the DA to be removed. I don't believe people who are violent in our city and commit repeated crimes. As for Brito, he remains held on Rikers Island on $15,000 cash bail. He also has two open cases. Another individual, Wilson Juarez, exchanged jackets first with Brito and then with another individual and was charged with tampering with physical evidence, brag statement added. The names of the two other people who were indicted but not yet apprehended remain under seal. Three other individuals are being sought, and another man who was initially charged with kicking a police officer has not been indicted while investigations continue. The initial footage that showed that the January 27 incident sparked outrage. Get them all and send them back, New York Governor Kathy Hochul told reporters. You don't touch our police officers, you don't touch anybody. There has been growing rhetoric against migrants in New York following the arrival of large numbers of them since spring 2022. On Monday, Police Commissioner Edward Cabin said that in recent months, a wave of migrant crime has washed over our cities. Adam said at Thursday's news conference that while Cabin's codes on migrants and asylum seekers have been widely reported, 
the overwhelming number over 170,000, they want to finish their next leg of their journey or pursuing the American dream. But there is a small minority that's participating in illegal behavior. We're going to pursue anyone that commits a crime. If they are long-standing New Yorkers or if they are new arrivals, and that's what we're doing. Most categories of crime are down since the increased migrant arrivals began, according to the Associated Press. Separately this week, a volunteer safety patrol group detained a man in Times Square whom they accused of being a shoplifting migrant. It later turned out he was a Spanish-speaking Bronx resident. Figure out exactly who did what. And so they're being smart about making sure that they look at all the evidence. The large majority of them are released into the U.S. and have not been deported or removed. The suspect will be in court this morning, we're told, and he is accused of attacking two police officers. Mob scuffling. Newly released police body cam footage captures the moment cops in Yonkers are forced to scuffle with a group of rowdy migrants at a local hotel packed with asylum seekers. Police busted two people during the Tuesday afternoon melee at a local Ramada Inn, but not before they were surrounded and berated in Spanish by an unruly migrant mob, the footage shows. Cops were called to the hotel shortly before 1 p.m. on reports of an out-of-control guest. The guy is over here unruly, a Ramada employee said during a 911 call. He's being very violent with everybody. He's throwing stuff at everybody. We need somebody here right away. The footage shows the officers walking into the lobby where they grabbed Arnold Kent, 35 years old, and took him into custody while surrounded by a crew of other migrants. Why does he have to hit me? Kent is heard jawing in Spanish as he struggles to get away. They're not taking me. I'm not doing anything. That's when a migrant woman, identified as 24-year-old Yenilet Hernandez, pushes the officers, then blocks the door of the police vehicle to bar cops from putting Kent inside. Yonkers cops manage to get the handcuffed suspect inside, then let things cool down, the video shows. After a few minutes, they go back to Hernandez and try to cuff her, only to have her try to fight off the cops, who are forced to take her to the ground to put the handcuffs on to the taunts of the bystanders. Kent was charged with menacing, disorderly conduct, and obstructing governmental administration and release without bail, police said. Hernandez was charged with second-degree attack, obstruction of governmental administration, and resisting arrest and was being held at the Westchester County Jail on $500 bail. In a statement Thursday, Yonkers Police spokesman Detective Sergeant Frank DiDomizio said police responded to a call for service and reacted appropriately. The Ramada Inn in Takahoe Road was tapped by New York City officials to take in about 250 migrants in May 2023 as the Big Apple struggled to find space for the flood of asylum seekers. There was an out-of-control guest while officers were arresting the suspect, 35-year-old Arnold Kent. Heading in the right direction for crime. But to someone's reality, someone who's been a victim of a crime, it tells a different story. An unruly mob of migrants scuffling with New York City cops at a hotel shelter north of Manhattan. They just want to feel safe. And we want to thank the governor for bringing resources into New York City Police Department. Breakthrough in U.S.-China Relations the U.S. is currently in high-level discussions with China to increase the number of Chinese nationals deported from the United States, according to Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. This would be a significant breakthrough in U.S.-China relations and American immigration policy. China has long been uncooperative with U.S. efforts to deport Chinese citizens back to their country, which has become especially consequential as the number of migrants from China illegally crossing the U.S.-Mexico border has skyrocketed to the tens of thousands. Mallorca said that China's refusal to accept deportations may be changing. He added that the talks are in a wait-and-see posture but are working with their counterparts. The talks come amid a broader thaw in relations between the U.S. and China, the world's two largest economies, after a Chinese spy balloon's flight over the U.S. sparked a diplomatic crisis. 
A historic in-person summit between President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping took place in San Francisco in November, followed by a phone conversation Tuesday. Liu Peng Yu, spokesperson for the Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C., said in a statement provided to NBC News that China cooperates with efforts to repatriate illegal immigrants. The Chinese government adheres to the principle of verification first, then repatriation in repatriating illegal immigrants. However, the U.S. has long counted China among a list of recalcitrant or non-cooperative countries when it comes to deportations, a list that has at times included other geopolitical adversaries like Russia. In 2022, in retaliation for a visit by then-Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan, China officially cut off cooperation on deportations, formalizing what had been de facto policy. An agreement allowing expanded direct deportations to China would likely have a large impact on these numbers. However, such deportations would still be resource-intensive and likely overwhelmed by the current number of arrivals. President Biden's meeting with China's president, we turn now to a story about the big increase in Chinese migrants. The U.S. has seen a rise in migrants crossing its southern border illegally in recent years. Each number, 24,000, those are the ones that turned themselves in or were captured, and you wonder how many were not. Uh, and that's only one part of the, the, the border situation. A part of this increase comes from China, with Chinese migrants embarking on perilous journeys through South America. Most migrants apprehended at the southern border, whether from China or elsewhere, are released into the United States to await years-long proceedings in severely backlogged immigration courts. Mallorca told NBC News that the recent bipartisan Senate bill on immigration would have fixed those backlogs, but the measure was blocked by pro-Trump Republicans. Until Congress acts, his department will be unable to meaningfully reduce migration from China or elsewhere. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.